Hello, whiskey folk. How are you all? How is everyone? Welcome to Thursday night. Welcome to another V pub. And uh, tell Hello, me where you are in the world. How are you all? Is that trying to the machine again? Tell us where you are in the world. Tell us what you're sipping tonight. And of course, if you're sipping alone, you know what to do. Type in Barfly if you'd like a shout out and I'll reassure you that you're absolutely not sipping alone. That's exactly what these things are about. Welcome to everybody. So many of you on this gorgeous, sunny, sticky, hot summer night in uh, Glasgow. It's been very, very warm today. We've been sitting outside and we actually managed to eat dinner tonight al fresco. Very rare occurrence in Glasgow, I have to say. Um, can I just say at the top of this thing, there is a theme tonight, but it's a kind of loose theme, very loose, more loose than normal. These live streams are not vlogs. <laughs> they are not uh, uh, typical videos. They're not reviews. They're, they're here. We're all here to kind of get together and enjoy some kind of whiskey time together. Now, it's fantastic that YouTube keeps it for us live online so that we can watch it after the event. That's a fantastic thing. And we can enjoy the, the, the live chat afterwards as well. Well, the chat is, is also kept running alongside these things. But that's not really their original intention. It's just nice that they can do that, that we can do that. I'm starting to get some comments of people complaining that I do too many of these kind of long-winded um, videos and not enough of the pre-recorded things. Well, I wonder if you caught the pre-recorded video that I put out last night. It was only a 20-minute video. It was fairly short. Um, I had to keep it nice and short. Uh, but you would probably, your toes would curl if I told you how many hours went into that video. Now, even the ones that take less effort than the video that went out last night, maybe a recycled review or something along those lines, or me just kind of talking to camera, there's still a lot of editing goes on, and there's a lot of prep and research and kind of writing things out first and before we do those videos and they take a lot, a lot, a lot of effort. So I'm kind of doing just about as much as I can do. Live streams are much easier. They're two hour long streams, yes, but they just take a wee bit of preparation beforehand. Two hours to do a live stream and then a bit of housekeeping and things afterwards, they're a lot easier. And most people seem to enjoy them. The people that come along and hang out with each other and get to know each other and lots of other cool things happen when, when, uh, when we get together. I can talk more about that later in the stream. But it's about the here, it's about the now, if you can make it. And if you can't, then hopefully you can enjoy relaxing, putting your feet up and taking in some of the comments and maybe some of my monologuing as well. But it's not intended as a, as a vlog. And I know that I'm probably to blame for some of that because of the topics that I pick. So for instance, last week, E158, so maybe a lot of people are interested in that subject and they come into that live stream thinking that they are going to see a kind of short, concise, succinct video. That's not what the pubs are about, is it? Anyway, let's jump into the lounge before I kind of go through what I'd like to talk about tonight and share with you tonight, and then welcome some of you guys. Wonderful to see you all here. I'll work backwards tonight. Neil Cochran is in. Fantastic, Neil. Good to see you. Multi Haggis Muncher Matthews and Daniel Vermas is in. Good to see you, Daniel. Gus is in. Good, good, good to see you back again. Gus, uh, Gus Terul. I need to find out how to pronounce your, your surname, my friend. Skippy Van Pobb is in. Good to see you, Skippy. Zach Andrews, Simon Ray, Willie Dolia. Uh, Orange Will, a new name. Barfly, sipping a Kregelhi, 22-year-old single cask in Grantman Spey. Good for you and welcome and you're very welcome here. Sounds like a crack in whiskey as well. Scotch on the Bayou, good to have you in, Leanne. Fantastic. Loch Ness is in. Uh, Daniel Vermas, I already mentioned you, Daniel, but you deserve two shouts. Don't you? A Kenneth Kennelty, Jimmy Legg, Service Alafis, that's Andreas. A Hoyt Temple, got to hang out with Hoyt recently, it was fantastic. Whiskey Whistle, Mark, good to, good to have you in, my friend, wonderful. He's saying, sorry, Roy, I'm at work, I'll pop in and out period periodically. Cheers. Mark, thanks for dropping in, thanks for taking a wee bit of time out of your workday to join us all. It's Mark from Whiskey Whistle in Canada. Juan Kent Quintanilla is in, good to see you, Juan. Cody Goodman, Cody, that's another new name, you're very welcome, good to have you in. Rostislav Traps, I think I've seen that name before, it rings a bell, it's good to welcome you here, and then perhaps if it is your first time, well, anyway, Steve A is in, good to have you Steve, Tim F, another new name, Tim, good to have you, 
And the Callum Fine and Rare, good to have you, my friend, the doc. Marcus Kreitner, Scog Smart. Uh, the London Whiskey Club, Jez. Fantastic, Jez. I'll, I'll talk a wee bit more about the London Whiskey Club. And what a pleasure of spending some time down there last weekend. Yorkshire Whiskey Reviews, good to have you, Malt Mariners. Hoagie Beer from Germany, Tabitha Adams, uh, Luna Aaron, I think also Luna, you're in Germany as well. Uh, Mark Saliba, Prestige Liquids, Andrew from uh, Australia. Mark, Michael Johnson, Mark, ah, uh, Marcus Kreitner, good to have you in, Marcus. I wonder if Christina's with you tonight. So many of you in, and uh, quite a few of you shouting, bar flat. Mark, ah, uh, Michael Johnson. So that's, that's the idea, you know, um, sometimes we get, uh, you know, we feel a wee bit remote sometimes, we can't get to the whiskey events, family, jobs, schedules, things get in the way of us sharing whiskey. But we can spend a little bit of time using this modern technology to get together and chat about whiskey things. This is exactly the type of format that I missed that I was enjoying a couple of years ago over in the States. And there wasn't anything really regular here in European time. I know Whiskey Jason was doing it, but that was in German. Um, and that's kind of how these things started. And I have to say, I'm really pleased for what they've come to represent over time. The sense of community and the sense of things that are happening out of people coming together, not just through me, but people making contact in the lounge. Um, the butterflies, if you like, getting to know each other. It's been really, really fantastic. I want to talk a little bit about that a bit later. The other thing I want to talk about tonight is um, bottles and how much you pay for bottles. How much would you consider is expensive for a bottle? What do you consider is good value? Do you have a spending limit? And I'll tell you the reason why I'm thinking about that subject. Uh, recently, when I was in Isla, I put a self-imposed limit on myself. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on whiskey. I felt like I had a lot of whiskey here. It was right before the shield. I wanted to see what was going to come out during the festival. So I managed to limit myself, and I only bought one bottle of whiskey when I was on Isla with uh, Scott and Bart from the Scottish Taste Dummies a month ago. When we took a tour around the Highlands and Speyside, again, I managed to just buy one bottle from that section of the tour. So I felt like I was quite careful let's say but that's dangerous because then that feeling of oh i've been careful suddenly the fish shield bottles came out and one or two of them got my eye and there was another couple of bottles that came up and and i, and I just kind of i don't know i just went for it and then i realized that the bottles that i bought were pretty expensive and i got to consider that have I moved away from the 30, 40, 50 pounds moderately priced whiskies? Am I only buying whiskey now if they're up close to 100 pounds and above, perhaps? I think it could become a problem. Um, and I think what we do as a community is we're very good at getting together and working out where the value is at much lower price points. And I think we need to keep doing that. Uh, A.W. Uh, during the we are the same, Roy, the wind is blowing in your mic. I'll try and fix that. Um, it's the heat in here. I've got a fan blowing tonight because it's just so, so sticky and warm here. And uh, being Glasgow, we don't have air conditioning. Let's, uh, let's see if that's any better. Thanks for the heads up. Your sound is a bit noisy, Daniel is saying. I wonder, is it? Let me check what mic I've got on tonight. I think that's going to be a lot better now, right? Google Hangouts has let me down recently. I did a check because I get caught out with this and I checked this beforehand and the only thing I've changed is I switched the camera off and on again and it's changed the sound input. Fighting technology again.
Is this better sound? Much better audio. Yeah, that's better. It's frustrating. And I've also heard that uh, Google Hangouts, as we use it, is being discontinued in August. So we're going to have to learn a whole new uh, way of doing things as well. Apologies for the poor sound. I guess that um, me switching the camera on and off again had also screwed up my audio. It's pretty frustrating. Anyway, tell me, what do you consider expensive? Uh, Caskmate, uh, fantastic to have you in, my friend, is saying uh, value is a combination of, of whiskey versus how much you're going to spend on it, Glendronic. 12 is, in my opinion, a great value whiskey. Same for Legic 10. I would agree with you, Matthias, on both of those whiskies. They're fantastic. Um, fantastic value whiskies and not too expensive. Legic 10 is £40 or less, I guess, and I think it's the same for Glendronic 12. I would include things like Kilcarran 12 in that as well, Deanston 12, for example. Uh, Sunday Even Scotch is saying he can hear it, but it's not a showstopper. You've got to stay comfortable, my friend. Well, I think it was, uh, yeah, it's just the wrong mic again. Uh, Tim F is saying $100 plus is starting to get expensive. I agree with you, Tim. Lunaran is saying expensive depends on what you have in the bottle. Again, good point. Uh, the last drop is saying feel your audio pain. Yeah, don't you know it, Chris? Um, you know, best prep in the world, sometimes you still get caught out a little bit. Yeah, none of us are professionals at this. Yeah, Don Francis in $300 is the most I've ever spent on a bottle of Middleton. Wow. I hope it was a good one, Donald. Uh, Mike Maruzzi is in. Good to see you, Mike. My top limit is Australian 200, which I think is about £100. Mark Slinger is saying, for, for me, £50 and up is expensive, and my limit is 100 Yes. Um, you know, for a long, long time, I struggled to spend over £100 on whiskey. There's been a few whiskey experiences recently that I've been able to try first. That I just felt like it was worth it, and I spent the money, and I spent over £100. Uh, Deanston Decenary was an example. Uh, I did also buy a, a more than £200 bottle of Glengoyne 25. I've actually bought it twice. Um, a Klein Leash, for example, Cast Strength Klein Leash, um, I seem to be easily paying over £100 for that now, especially the older stock. It's just the way it's going. Um, you know, it's it's whiskey is becoming more expensive anyway, but does that mean that we are mapping, you know, the higher prices, or are we kind of stepping back and saying, no, we're going to find um, where the value is, where the experiences are um, with the more moderately priced and better value expressions. Hoyt is saying, I can go $270 for a Middleton, but it has to be really good. So I'll share with you what I did recently. I want to share a few things, actually, because I've got some gifts here as well. Over my shoulder here, it's a bit like whiskey Christmas in the corner. Um, this came through the post. I didn't know anything about it. I did get an email to say that um, a, the Good Dram Club, or the Dram Good Club, as they're calling it from that boutique whiskey company, was now uh, releasing. Uh, Eric Waite has just sent across a, a dollar to say, Aquaviti, happy, happy birthday to Bart at Scotch Test Dummies and Sean at Scotch Four Dummies. Well, that's amazing. I didn't know that it was Bart's birthday. I think I was vaguely aware when his birthday was, but it's, it's, it wasn't in my mind. Uh, so yes, many happy returns, Bart. And I had no idea it was Sean's birthday as well. So Sean, happy birthday, big guy. Um, I hope your birthdays bring you fine spirits. Sean is part of the Scotch Four Dummies. Those guys are going live a wee bit later tonight as well. Uh, they've got a, a nice show looking at lost distilleries, actually. And they're teasing a very special guest. I have no idea who that is. Um, so, yeah, I'd be curious to see who's going to appear on their show. But anyway, a long time ago, I did a tweet tasting for... Uh, uh, that boutique whiskey, it was before the channel, I guess, before the channel um, had uh, much in the way of subscribers or anything, and I enjoyed doing a kind of tweet tasting. So I guess these guys had my address, and Dave um, uh, at that boutique uh, whiskey company, I think, has sent me this little selection along. So there's no uh, uh, requests or demands. I don't need to review this. I don't need to do a write-up or anything. I think it's just a, here's little samples from some of the recent releases. And I'll tell you what's in the box. I haven't paid for this at all. I, the, this club is, I don't think is a membership or anything. And um, there's a, let me pull up the camera to see that you can see this. Um, 
this is all kind of master malt samples, so 3CL samples, 30 mils. This is a Santis 10-year-old uh, single malt from Switzerland. Santis is Swiss. Uh, Heaven Hill, this is a 9-year-old batch one. Uh, this is a corn whiskey, 49.5% from Heaven Hill. Um, that's curious, I'd be li like to try that. Also South African, a three ships, six-year-old batch one, 53.7%. Uh, the missing space here is what I've got in the glass. And that is a Taninic. Where did I put the empty bottle? It's uh, This is the one I, I was really looking forward to trying, actually. It was quite light as well, I hope. Um, Taninic, 19-year-old batch one, 48.6%. Uh, now, 486 that could be at 19 year, year, years old. It could be cast strength. And this is a Caroni, uh, Trinidad 20-year-old batch one column rum. So you know what? A nice little tasting pack from the guys at Boutique. Um, I don't usually get things for free. Uh, there's really not enough in this. It's only small three, it's three CL samples to be sharing. But normally if I did get something for free, I would try my very, very best to share it. And I don't mind accepting it if it's a, just a genuine gift and there's no kind of, you know, I have to do something with it or, you know. Uh, I wouldn't be very good. I'd be letting people down right, left, and center. Tunic is quite bright and apple-y. Little sharp, little floral. The sharpness is like a tart apple. But I did get something else for free as well. Recently, I went to Ardnaho and uh, the uh, the PR company involved is, I think they're called Steely Fox or whatever. I got an email from them to say, Roy, can we have your address? Mm -hmm. And I said, eh, sure, what for? And said, we'd like you to send you a sample of the new Scarabus or whatever. And I said, okay, sure. Um, but they didn't send a sample. <laughs> they sent a whole bottle. This is unopened. Uh, there's no note in it, there's no explanation or whatever. Um, I did, in the email, there was an attachment with the, the press release and things like that. Uh, I should have probably read that before I went live. Um, so yeah, they, they've given me a bottle of this. Now this isn't expensive whiskey, this is £38 retail. So um, what do you think about that? What do you think about me starting to get sent stuff for free? People need to have my address to be able to do it. And I have to say there's very, very few. In fact, that's the only two producers that I'm aware of that have my address. Um, I have to say, I think it would be petty, petulant, or maybe even rude for me to kind of pack it up and send it back and say, no, I don't accept anything for free. I think if I can share it with people and if I don't have any, there's nothing, no responsibility on me to do reviews or write-ups or say positive things about anything, um, I think it's okay. And if they don't mind me trying this and saying, giving an absolutely honest opinion about it, and you know, but again, I've got so much whiskey. Honestly, producers, there's no need for anybody to send me any whiskey. I've got more whiskey than I can get through as things stand, and I'm constantly buying exactly what I want to buy and try and share that with you. Bourbon rye scotch, good to have you in the same. Caroni rum is considered the Port Ellen of the rums by Rumheads. Wow. Tim F is saying, nothing wrong with getting it for free, just be honest with what you think. Absolutely, and I think what people have to do is they have to know that I've got these things for free, so when I share it with people or when I talk about it, they can apply their own rational intelligence as well. Daniel Vermas is saying, I to share the knowledge. Steve A, whenever I share something, eh, the only thing I ask is that the recipient gives it an honest try. Absolutely. The master drum is saying, cheers, Roy. Hope you're well, great friends and whiskey. Good to have you in, Jason. Great to have you watching, my friend. So I'm going to try, before I try the Scarabus, um, I'm going to try this Taninic. I have, I have to say, because of the flora and fauna Taninic and a few independent bottlings I've had, I really quite enjoy it. Taninic is a highland distillery. It's a little bit north of Inverness. It's one of Diageo's. Uh, the only... Uh, official bottling that they put out is that flora and fauna um, there has been a special release I think maybe only one um, there's only one that I can think of so we don't see a lot of it it's up close to 
Dalmor and let's give it a wee sip. Well, it's a little bit richer than I expected from the nose. It's maybe quite tight on the nose. It's uh, richer, rounder and sweeter on the palate. A little bit of spice. Nice spice. But I have to say, fairly typical of the style. Not a standout in any direction. Just a kind of solid... A bit of ginger, just a solid Highland whiskey on first sip. A little bit of fruit as well, a little bit of banana coming in. But the apple's there, the apple that was on the nose, it's not tart on the palate, it's not sharp. You would easily mistake this for a fairly solid space cider. Decent wee distillery. I say we, I think it's about six million litres. I think it's one of Diageo's factories. Um, but most of it obviously goes into to blends. It's not even Scotch is saying I've got a 36 year old chieftain's Tarinic, a sherry cask from 1982. Absolutely superb stuff. If you ever get to the indie area to see the Scotch for dummy guys, I'll have to save a pour for you. Thank you so much. So Sunday evening scotch. I think that's Michael. Are you Michael? Um, that's very good of you. I didn't realise that you were out there and close to uh, Indianapolis. Scogsmart is saying, nursing a sore throat, ran out of medicine. Here's to seeing <laughs> if our <hard> beg <laughs> makes a good substitute. I can't imagine it's going to do any harm. Scogsmart, good for you. Uh, Gregor is in from France. Good to see you, Gregory. St. John Glazer. I seem to agree with you as I see he uses more and more of this distillery's cast to enhance, in my opinion, the already very Highlandish Klein Leash distillery style in his blendings. Has he started to use a lot of Tanenic, has he? Um, I'm not really keeping up. I know that he's obviously famed for using a lot of Klein Leash in there as well. And that's not even Scotch is saying, yes, this is Michael Porter. This is changing a wee bit now. This is getting a wee bit like pastry, the kind of fruit thing that, I, that I've started to tune in on is like a, like almost like a Danish pastry filled with a, I don't know what the fruit is. It's fruity. I don't think it is banana, actually. I think it's more maybe apricot something along those lines. Anyway. That's our Tanenic. I want to share with you the other ones. Now, I did pay for, I bought the other ones myself. And uh, both of these were ones that I had a discussion with myself before I bought them. Um, and obviously convinced myself to go ahead and pull the trigger. Because this is what I'm talking about. These are, these are expensive whiskies. And what I want to pose to you guys is that yes, I've gone over that £100 limit. I'm in triple figure territory. But I want to try and consider, do they represent value? And of course, I'm speaking about, I'd mentioned already before, that somebody, uh, through a friend of Willie Dolier's, Willie's in tonight, thank you very much, Willie, managed to uh, drop into Kalila on Isla and pick me up one of the Fischio bottlings. Uh, there was lots of these, I like the way Diageo would do it, none of this kind of 200 bottles only, uh, auction fodder thing. These are solid, these are out there and plentiful supply for the drinkers. And from Kalila, we have for their 2009 Fischio bottling a 22 year old product. Now it's at cast strength at 58.4%. Um, and it's, uh, I've had mixed reports, one or two, uh, uh, let's say people that didn't connect with it, but generally the, the feedback on this has been very, very good. I haven't tried it yet. But the reason I was drawn to this is this is a 22-year-old Isla whiskey uh, from, I think, a sherry-treated uh, American 
hogsheads. I don't. I'm not sure if that's absolutely true. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it's a 22-year-old Isla whiskey, and it was 130 pounds. Now let's think about what other 22-year-old Isla whiskey you could buy for that price. And then also consider that it was a Fischl bottling. I think I have to say that that's fair. Given the prices that Isla are reaching, it seems on paper, on the label without trying it, it seems fair. That's what made me pull the trigger on the Kalila. Tim F is saying probably not will any of those be. Uh, I'm not sure if I've kept up with that with that discussion. Um, I mean, I don't know how you feel about that. Thomas Elmer is saying, what were you doing 22 years ago, Aquaviti? I can tell you exactly, this time of year I had just met, uh, I had just started a relationship with my wife. Um, yeah, I was 20 seven years old so yeah when this product well the youngest component of this let's say was was made it was last century i was 27 years old greg is saying indeed a bargain this kalila and if it is as good as some say you're on for a super treat my friend well let's see because it's getting open, open tonight and i'm going to find a way to share some of it with somebody out there Aquaviti, will any of those uh, be that much better than a £50 or a $50 Springbank 10? This is the thing, but I'd, I think we need to be... If we just ended up drinking Springbank 10 forever in a day, that would be pretty boring. As good as Springbank 10 is, it's probably, arguably, the best 10-year-old product that there is um, on a good day, a good bottle of it. But do we just really want to drink 10-year-old Springbank forever? I think we like... To contrast things, we like to drink other things and then come back to Spring Bank 10 and realize just how good it is, for example. Um, but uh, yeah, I take your point. I take your point. Per Christensen is saying, Hi, Roy, just came from work and now ready to see the show and have a dram. Welcome in, Per. Wonderful to have you and thanks so much for your uh, dram that you bought me during the video release last night. Zach Andrews is saying, I picked up a Deanston 20 for 125 US dollars. That seems pretty good value to me. And the Deanston 20, that would be the Oloroso, I think, that made it across to the state sack. The Whiskey Bowman, Chris, good to see you in, Chris. £130 for a 22-year-old at Castren seems okay to me. Um, and Gregor is saying, Acrovite, pop that cork. Prestige, like, like <laughs> I'll get to it, Gregor. Uh, I bought a bottle of Freud Cartius 2004 for 170 I was put off buying it for months and I eventually bought it. It was the last one in stock. 170. Of course, a contrast, but the value probably isn't there at four times the price. And then you have the Glendronic 12, Glengoy 15, all under 50, 50 US dollars. But they're different things. They're different whiskies. And it's something I'm questioning myself. So you, you make a good point, Tim, because I'm asking, you know what? Okay, I'm buying less, but I'm spending more. So I'm probably spending the same amount of money. I'm just getting less whiskey, which isn't all bad. Um, but I'm asking myself the questions. I'm bringing that awareness thing in again. Just to think about, am I getting the value out of it? And it brings me on to another product I have here. Um, another one that I, I couldn't resist. This is a Deanston. And uh, this is 23 years old. I spent 20 years in a, a refill sherry butts before uh, three years in... Um, sherry hogsheads. So this is 23 year old Oloroso matured product. Cask strength at 50.2% and it was 150 pounds. So we have a similar age product both from sherry casks all their lives in sherry casks. One's an Isla whiskey at 22 years old there's only a year of difference between them 130 and 150 pounds similar price points but really, really quite different prospects. They're all getting open tonight. I'm going to give you my first impression of them, the neck pour. And I'm also going to pour a sample for anybody that's in the chat tonight. I'll find some way just asking random questions first to answer. And I'm also going to pour a sample for one of my patrons as well and send them out there. I would like to share 
more samples than that. But honestly, the thing that stops me is the cost of postage and the difficulty of shipping alcohol to some countries, even when it's just wee small 30 or 50 mil bottles. Eric has seen Aquavita on receiving bottles. Transparency, objectivity and honesty are key. If there are strings attached or I can't be straight in my review, I won't accept the bottle. I feel the very same way, Eric. I don't, I do this out of fun. I'm driven by passion, a willingness and a desire to share. And if I suddenly become beholden to somebody, I've just replaced my boss with a whiskey boss. And that's not the game I want to play. I'm enjoying being community funded, being self-funded, just doing what I want to do when I want to do it. And as soon as you start accepting stuff, like you say, Eric, with strings attached, that goes out the window and I'm not ready to give that up. Okay. Let's uh, have another wee sip of this, Terenic. I do think this profile is Terenic. It's quite a good settler. It's quite a nice dram to have, to build up to these. Now, what order would you have these in? The Scarabus is 46%. It's going to be peated. This is a single malt. Um, there's no information on what distillery it's from. It's an Isla single malt, no age statement. So it's going to be young. It's going to be punchy, I would guess. Um, I'm guessing fully. Uh, the Kalila is obviously peated. And the Deanston is unpeated. I'm tempted to open the Deanston first. Let it sit in the glass for a wee minute. Quite a quiet, muted little pop from the bottle. Just a wee pour, a wee drum. Let it air for a minute. There we go. It's the Deanston done. But those rules are only for whiskey, says Eric, not Lamborghinis. <laughs> yeah, but what would you have to do for that Lamborghini, Eric? That's the issue. Alan, the whiskey friend is in. Good to have you, Alan, saying, Ryan, I'm sending samples and labelling them as snow globes. Uh, and they can go anywhere. But yes, the postage is brutal, buddy. You should probably keep that to yourself, Alan. Uh, Luna Aaron is saying, really great to get this from you. No strings attached. George Braley is saying, Deanston Scarabus and the Isla. A uh, good order, George. Yeah, I think I'm close to that. Andrew Steger, uh, good to have you in, Andrew. Saying, is it true Scottish people don't care about Scotch as much? Um, I think it's nothing to do with your nationality, and it's more to do with the fact if you've engaged with whiskey, regardless of where you are. You would imagine that Scots would be much more engaged because we make it here, but we kind of we've gone through the same kind of. Uh, relationship with Scotch is the rest of the world. You know, it's become a fashion thing at times. And for a long, long time in this country, the same as the rest of the world, we just drank it as a brown drink. It was just whiskey. And for years and generations before me, uh, maybe they had affinities to brands of blends such as Bells or Grouse or whatever it was. And there wasn't a lot of uh, focus. Same as the rest of the world, there wasn't a lot of focus on malts. And that's changed massively in the last 30 years. 40 years. Uh, Steve A thinks Deanston then Kalila and then the Strong Peat. Arguably good idea. I'm worried that the Scarabus is then put at a disadvantage after a 22 year old though. So we'll see. The first cork pop and the initial glug 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 you only get in that first pour. Those are among the finer things in life. I have to agree Michael. I have to agree. Okay I'm just going to have a wee sniff of the Deanston. I'm just going to leave it to air. Very clean, no sulfur, not a lot of dunnage on there. Super clean and very fruity, very, very fruity. I'm encouraged by the nose on that, very encouraged. Um, yeah, so okay, let's go for this. Let's, uh, I'll study the chat and I'll ask a question. And whoever answers the question first, and I'll try and take a screen grab to prove that I'm not 
that on, because sometimes the order that you see the chats coming in is different from what I see. You know, it's just to do with um, uh, uh, delays and uh, lags and things like that. But I'll try and grab a screenshot. I'm going to ask a question. The video that went out last night, um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I put a hell of a lot of effort into that. That's just about as good a video as this talent as it stands can make right now. I was, uh, that was pretty much the best I could do with the footage I had and uh, the, you know, the idea I had to make a video. Um, but let's uh, ask a question. Um, in that video, Bart, when he visited our beg, what kind of hat was he wearing? First person to answer, I'll ship them a sample of this Deanston 23. What kind of hat was Bart wearing in the Ard Beg video that I went out that went out yesterday, or the Scotch Test Dummies in Scotland video when he visited Ard Beg? Sunday evening Scotch is saying a straw hat. I'm afraid not. Cowboy hat, nope. Straw, nope. Manga cowboy. Uh, baseball cap, no steps and bucket, none. He wasn't baseball cap, straw hat. I'm still looking for it. Cowboy, cowboy, baseball straw. No, Wooly. Okay, Wooly. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. the Wooly hat. Does and there we go. Sauli Pauro got it. But I need to get that. I need to get that screen grab. Just in case there's anybody that considers that I might be. He was wearing a flat cap or a bonnet, as we would say here. It looks like Sauli Poop, Sauli Puro, sorry. Solly? Sorry about my, my pronunciation, my friend. Regardless, I don't know where in the world you are, but I hope you're in a place that I can ship you a sample of Deanston, 23 years old. So at the Deanston. If you want to send me an email, whiskey at aquavite.com, um, aquavite spelled the exact same way as it is on the channel, whiskey at aquavite.com, um, and let me know if you would like to claim your Deanston 23. I've also got here a spreadsheet of my patrons. Um, it's arranged alphabetically. I'm not going to mess, mess around with screen share and things like that because there's a bunch of stuff on there, their email addresses and all sorts of things that they want, want to share. Uh, you'll just have to trust me, patrons, that I'm doing this properly. Um, but I'm going to just uh, draw also uh, a sample for my patrons as well. Hey Siri, give me a random number between 1 and 183. A random number between 1 and 183 is 28. 28. If I scroll to number 28, that's CAS code. CAS code. So CAS code, my friend, I don't know if you'll be watching this, but I know how to get in touch with you. Um, I will uh, send a message to you directly and you've won yourself, if you want to claim it, a sample of this Deanston 23 year old. There we go. I'll jump back to you guys. Uh, Bart was wearing a flat cap at our beg. I did comment on that on the way as we were walking up to our beg and I think he was just in the mood to wear a flat cap, but the cowboy hat was worn pretty much the rest of the time. Okay. Congratulations, Solly. I think that's how I'm pronouncing your name. Um, and uh, congratulations, Cascode. I'm also going to uncork a second bottle tonight as well. I'm really excited about this one. This is uh, my Kalila, 22 year old. I expect this to appear at auctions all over the place. Nice. This is going into the, the Aqua Vitae Glen Cairn. <laughs> smells pretty good. <laughs> I'm easily pleased. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. 
Whiskey Geek Ben is in good to have you. Um, ben, I uh, enjoyed having uh, Ben on the show two weeks ago and we did the colour experiment together. It was a pleasure to have you here. Good to see you in tonight as well. Perik uh, Wilam, Gulam on Kalila 2019 for Shield Bottling Starts as Distillers Edition. 12 year ex bourbon and, and uh, EU ex Sherry Hogsheads. Recharb and Moscatel treated casks. Ah, okay. So there's multiple casks going on here. Maybe I'm thinking about the lag of villain. Was I getting confused with the lag of villain? Uh, good information, Ben. And then two times three months, then American Oak refill, sherry treated for the remainder. Okay, so this is not exclusively sherry. So this is a this is a finish in sherry. Good information, Ben. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Prestige Liquids is saying, Aquavita, do you have any bottles that you just refuse to open? None. Absolutely none. Um, it's all just a question of the right moment. There's some stuff there that's become quite expensive. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's at the point that, you know, the whiskey is going to struggle to live, live up to its value now. And those bot bottles, while I like them a lot or while I'm very curious to try them, I'm suspicious that they might not deliver on their costs. So they're either going to be sitting there for a long time until the moment comes that it's the obvious one to open um, or I'm skint. I don't have any money left <laughs> and I need to... Um, swap. I have never sold a bottle of whiskey through auction yet. I don't think I've even sold a bottle of whiskey to anyone else. Um, um, I've swapped bottles, um, but I've never sold a bottle yet. But I reserve the right to sell if I have to. Um, there you go. A whiskey geek is saying Perique is the distillery manager. Oh, of course he is. Um, it's got a, a lot going on to make it. Sounds like a belter. Uh, yeah, Perique, that's right. Uh, Pierrick, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name either, but I think he's the husband of the woman who's doing the catering for Arnaho as well. I'd forgotten that. Quiz question for the future. Next week is the last VPUB, or sorry, two weeks' time uh, will be the last VPUB before the summer break. Um, and the quiz, I'm thinking of uh, for the quiz for the last one, to do questions uh, from uh, the last 12 months or so, the 11 months, um, just to kind of do a, a compilation of uh, questions from previous VPUBs. Uh, there is a quiz at the end tonight. Uh, if you stay for that, you might want to enjoy a quiz with everyone else. But I think, I'm fairly convinced it's easier than normal tonight. I think we might have the possibility of uh, at least one or two people getting a 10 out of 10 tonight, so I hope that some of you stay till the end. Okay, let's come up with a question so that I can give away the Kalila. In the same spirit of the video last night, suppose I'm then I'm being kind of favouritist towards people who watched that video last night, so maybe that's not fair. Okay, let's have a Kalila question. Um, okay, I'll need to double check this as I ask it. On the Kalila Flora and Fauna bottling, which doesn't exist anymore, it used to be a 15-year-old, um, what was the animal depicted on the label? What animal was depicted on the label of Kalila Flora and Fauna? Oh, wow, it's 268 pounds to buy that now. £268 for a 15-year-old Kalila Flora and Fauna, but that's retail. Uh, oh, I'd have got that wrong. I'd have got it wrong. Teddy bear, unicorn, cat, otter. I thought it was an otter. Tomato Yoshi saying otter, goat. And NZ Anime Manga is saying harbour seal. It's a seal. Nice one. It's a seal. Was, did anybody get to that before you? <laughs> Nick Keen is saying duck. Tim is saying bear. <laughs> Thomas Elmer, stag, otter. No, I think I think the first one to answer seal was NZ Anime Manga. So does that mean you're in New Zealand? Um, just let me know if you want to claim that. Send me an email, whiskeyacrovite.com, and I'll get it shipped to you. Well done. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. 
one more sip of the Tyrannic. And I can free up the only other spare glass I have to pour some of that. Stefan G is saying a picture of Roy. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going to let these air. The room is starting to smell of the Kalila. So I'm going to put a little coin. Scotch Test Dummies cast got a three coin. And uh, I've got another coin here. This is a Scotch Four Dummies second fill. Uh, whose coin is this? This is a Sean coin, isn't it? Saying I'm still pouring. So yeah, it's appropriate because it's Sean's birthday today. And Bart's birthday. There we go. So I'll cover up the, the Deanston and the Kalila. And I'll raise the glass to say slant you. And maybe uh, I'm going to hide that um, NZ anime manga. You've said whiskey at aquavitae.com. That is the exact spelling. It's perfect. Um, but I'm not going to show the comment because it's, it's an email address. And um, But you've got it absolutely right. Let's uh, see what patron can also enjoy a wee sample of the Kalila. I almost forgot. Same as last time. Hey Siri, give me a random number between 1 and 183. A random number between 1 and 183 is 130. 130. See who that is. Robert Fiore. Fantastic, Robert. Well done. He's a he's quite a recent patron. Uh, I've recently spotted Robert Fiore in the comments and things and started uh, supporting me just a, a month or two ago. Congratulations, Robert. Um, I'll get in touch with you directly through Patreon if you're not in tonight, and uh, we'll get it shipped out to you. Um, NZ Anime Manga is saying, Ace, you get to try some of this. Kalila, fantastic. You're excited about that. Okay, yeah. I'll give this a wee rinse. This Glencairn. I'll get the Scarabus uncorked as well. I have to say, on the face of it, on paper, bear in mind I've not tried this whiskey. This is a an Isla single malt. It's quite nicely presented, 46%. No mention of age, of course. Um, and also I noticed there's no mention of uh, the state of uh, chill filtration or colour or whatever it may be. Um, there might be something in the press release. So forgive me. Nice cork pop. Hmm. It would be nice if they said it was natural colour on the bottle because it looks like I'm making an assumption that it's a young Isla but it looks like it's perhaps had a dot of colour added. Now this was poured this this was uh, released at Fishiel I believe and uh, during June it's become available on uh, various markets it's been distri distributed quite heavily Wow. It's quite sweet. Obviously, I'm not even mentioning the, the peat smoke and the... It is heavily peated. On the nose, it's reminiscent to me. The closest thing I can imagine right now There's a softness to it, sweet, rounded. It's reminiscent to me a little bit of the uh, Game of Thrones nine-year-old lag villain. That's what it's uh, reminded me of. I'm going to use my uh, London Whiskey Club coin to cover up this wee dram. And uh, just from the nose alone, I'm going to leave the Scarabus till the end and chat to you guys for a little bit while I go into this Deanston. Oh, 
wow. This is very inviting. If you like sherry matured whiskey, you're going to love this nose, but it's not dark. It's clean. You know, the, the things that you associate with the sherry, um, Oloroso sherry, is they are, they are there, but they're light. Maybe, maybe kind of spice and nuts, but not lots of heavy syrupy fruits. Light fruits, like more berries and alcohol. Maybe a little bit of kind of prune juice, that kind of note. But it's not it's not heavy and dark. I just I'm gonna to have to go in and have a wee sip. Slancho folks, nice to have you all. Deanston Absolutely gorgeous whiskey. <clears throat> Desperate to share that. Sherry cask whiskies, sherry matured whiskies. Think of Glendronix. Uh, think of uh, aged Glen Farkless. You know, they, they, they do what they do very, very well, but they're extreme. They're way out there at one end of the bandwidth. And when people love that, they really love it and they can just sink into it and really enjoy it. So we're talking big, velvety, spiced, sumptuous, Christmas cake, rich, dark, bitter chocolates, those kind of really dark whiskies. This is not that. This is sherry, but it's, it's a wee bit more playful and clean. And I have to say that the Deanston thing is still there. The Deanston character is there. There's a lovely, lovely, lovely texture to it. I think this whiskey is going to get better and better, dram by dram, sip by sip. Sally and Cascode, I think you're going to enjoy these drams. It's very, very nice. I think it's very nice. And Neil is saying, is the Deanston a distillery special? I believe, unfortunately, it is. I think this one's only available at the distillery, but I think they have an online shop. I'm not sure. Um, Connor is in. Good to see you, Connor. Aquaviti, don't let Satu near it. Well, interestingly, Satu being a, a perfect example of an utter, utter sherry head, I wonder how he would interact with this. If he's looking for extreme sherry, I don't know if this would deliver for him. It's just a classy, I'm really, I'm really glad I have this. I'm really glad I have this. I'm looking forward to sharing this with people and getting some feedback. Tom is here, Spirit Works. Tom, even Roy, I've just sat down with a drama Springbank. Local Barley 16. Ah, you've got the 16, you lucky bugger. Only opened it on Sunday in celebration of the birth of my first child, Tom. Let's raise a dram and say congratulations. If you're not tired now, you're about to get very tired, but congratulations, my friend. I can't think of a better excuse to open a Springbank or any decent whiskey, but Springbank Local Barley 16 sounds peachy, perfect to me. Tom, congratulations, my friend. I'm really chuffed for you. Well done. Mm. I trust mummy and baby are doing very well. 
which Gigi is in Scarabus is named after an area of farmland in the north of Isla between Bridgend and Ballygrant in which a distillery named Scarabus operated for a year in 1870 1818. I knew I knew about the so that's very close to it's up towards Ardenhoe. I knew about the location on Isla called Scarabus, but I had no idea, Ben. You it's awesome to have you in. You are truly a whiskey geek. Um I had no idea that there was a distillery there. Okay, almost, uh, well, over 200 years ago, but there was a distillery. Simon Ray saying, can't see it on Deanston's online shop. You maybe need to make the trip there, Simon. Sorry. Um, they, do, they do do a lot of distillery specials at Deanston. They do do a lot of it. Um, which is nice because they do get a lot of uh, footfall, they got a lot of visitor traffic there, um, but it can mean it's tricky for you guys. Um, I will find ways to share this whiskey. Um, everybody is saying congratulations to Tom, I think that's just wonderful. George Braley is confirming it doesn't seem to be available online. Uh, I put out an article on the website today, actually it just went live today, I've been writing it for a few days. Last weekend, I had a wonderful invite to go down and join the London Whiskey Club for their first year anniversary. And the reason I was invited there is that um, they, they largely uh, accredit the, this channel, this specifically these live streams, with um, the inception or the beginning of their channel. And that is that Jez and Jason got to know Connor, got to know Mikey Hay, got to know James Hope. They all started chatting together. And from that discussion in the chat, they got together to start meetings down in London and create their own whiskey club. And that's been going for a year now, hence the commemorative coin that I've got on the Scarabus here. And they invited me down and I'd been threatening for a long time to join them for a, one of their tasting nights. Um, so I knew that they were thriving. I knew that they were doing very, very well. But what I wasn't prepared for was how nice they have everything right now. There's this lovely open, uh, really kind of shared experience type vibe going on. And I put an article together on the website and uh, it's under the Barfly section of the website. I, I need to sort the website out and work out what I'm actually doing with it. You will find the article there if you just go to aquavitae.com. You can read about the London Whiskey Club and my experience there and my, my opinions of it and things like that. Um, but what they are doing, which I think is really quite innovative and curious and uh, I've bought into it is that anybody can be a member of the London Whiskey Club. They're going to try to manage things obviously and structure tastings and things like that but in order to be a member and in order to have uh, access to the membership of that club anybody can join regardless of where you live. They are completely inclusive. They don't care where you live um, but they will allow you to join on an international membership like I am and Sevi also, Sevi's a fellow Glaswegian, I don't know if Sevi's in tonight, the alchemist, he's joined the London Whiskey Club, Rolf is there with them right now for a few days from Wednesday through Saturday, Ebhead, Rolf, who's almost all, always in these chats, he's joined as a member as well. An idea being that if you're travelling through London or if you're spending a night in London and you find yourself with some time, You've got intelligence there, you've got people on the ground that can give you feedback about London and the whiskey scene and what you might want to do, places to eat, where to go. And potentially also have fellow whiskey heads to meet up with while you're there. It's fabulous. So I am now very happily a fully paid up member, I paid my membership fees. Um, I'm a fully paid up member of the London Whiskey Club and I'm very, very pleased to be part of it. And the fact that, it, that this channel started something like that, or helped, let's say, start to something like that, take nothing away from Jez and his guy, this team down at London Whiskey Club, and Jason and Connor and Mikey and James and all the guys I got to hang out with and meet, um, the fact that this channel could start that was is way beyond my wildest dreams. And I want to back that up by saying, if you are somewhere and you feel like there's a desire for a club near you to do similar things as the London Whiskey Club, I will help you. Let me know about it and and let me talk about it and say that there are people in these cities um, that are interested in starting a club and I'll mention it on these live streams and hopefully help you try and get a wee bit of traction in order to get together and share whiskey and share um, uh, you know that common uh, fellowship and, and experience. 
read the article on the website. And I've started to kind of uh, put some articles out on the website again because I feel that um, it's just time. It's a time issue. But there's so much, th so many things that I want to share um, that it's kind of nice. As long as you forgive the kind of clumsy writing and things like that, uh, you know, there's things that I'm from time to time it's going to be appropriate for me to share on the website and it's kind of a nonsense having aquavitae.com out there as a website and me just doing nothing with it which is what happened for the last two years the whiskey drama is saying aquavitae it was great to have you down and share a dram with you absolutely it was the whiskey dram i'm trying to remember your name this is the trouble with pretend names. And that's what I discovered when I was there. In the first hour or two at that whiskey club meeting, that barbecue on Saturday, I found myself looking and hearing the people's names but not being able to connect. I, I wasn't... So Michael is Marvel at Whiskey on Instagram. Okay, okay, of course I know who Michael is then, but I didn't know him as Michael. Kieran is Whistable Whiskey. Of course I know who Kieran is. Fantastic. Um, we're fortunate that some people like Satu has Satu.com, so it's easy to make that connection, but it's tough. Um, so the Whiskey Dram, I know that you're a supporter of me as well, and uh, I need to make the connection again. My fudgy brain and uh, just the amount of people that I'm meeting up with just now as well is, uh, is making it tricky. I was out just last night with Graham Young, another one of my long-term supporters, Graham Young. He was in Glasgow to meet his, his daughter who lives here, but he's come over from Canada. And we've been talking about Colorado whiskies. So when I turned up and met him last night, I asked him about living in Colorado. <laughs> it's just, there's so many things going on. Christian Dugstad, good to see you, Christian, who's saying mentioning Glaswegians. Any tips for good spots in Glasgow? Are you talking about whiskey spots? I can give you whiskey spots. So if you're over in the West End area, you want to look at the wee pub at the Chip. Uh, it's a whiskey selection, curating a lot of the nice whiskies there. Oran Moore is only 100 yards from it as well. Fantastic. Uh, you've got uh, in the city centre, you would have the pot still, of course, the famous pot still. The Piper, Piper Bar as well has got decent whiskey in it. Um, and then a bit further, kind of in between the two, a bit up towards Charing Cross, you've got uh, the Bon Accord as well. There are, there are lots of spots starting to curate good whiskey selections in Glasgow. Um, Hoyt is saying, didn't know uh, I could bring whiskey samples, I would have brought you Deanston, eight-year-old cognac finish. I don't worry about it, Hoyt. We'll find lots of ways in the future to share whiskey, my friend, don't worry about it. I got to hang out with Hoyt in Glasgow recently as well, along with uh, Werner, uh, one glass man, which was a fantastic privilege. Jez Batty saying, thank you. We are indebted to you as well as for all the shout-outs you give us. Do you know what? It's like whiskey, Jez. It's, it's no different. A club is the same as whiskey. If it's good and it's doing good things, um, it deserves to be shouted about. That's kind of where this evangelism thing comes from. It's not about, it's not nothing to do with religion. I don't care how anybody prays or anything. It's just about when things are done well, they deserve to be talked about. Mikey Hayes, and he's saying, evening, evening all, I've arrived late tonight, what have I missed? You've just missed me talking about your club, Mikey, and I even give you a wee shout out. Shout out. Amy is in, I am Amy, Aquaviti or am I? <laughs> you are Amy, welcome in, fantastic to have you, Amy. Are you bullying people into hitting the thumbs up? It's always a pleasure to have you. Gregory is saying, if we catch up for a dram, do I call you Aqua or Viti? Uh, Mr. Viti, Gregor, you can call me. I hope you just call me Roy. Skippy Van Pobb is saying Scott here. So Skippy is Scott. Excellent. So let's see if uh, if uh, the whiskey dram has, has stayed silent. I think he's I think I've offended him. He's in a huff because I've forgotten who he actually is. Let me find you. I hope I hope you've mentioned it here. Scott's Madison saying, jealous of all you Scots. We have so many distilleries close by with fantastic tours. Only one distillery here to offer tours. It's over an hour away. More uh, by sample friendly transit. Do you know, we are very, very lucky. But it still involves, I mean, even though we're in the same country, it still involves, involves transport for us. We need to take time off. And you can't go and visit a distillery in your lunchtime, right? It, it takes a day. Um, and if, it's, if you're going up to Speyside, if you're going up to the Highlands, if you're going to any of the islands, it takes a couple of days even just to go and visit one, honestly. But yes, 
it is fantastic to live here. I constantly am grateful that I am living in this country when I love whiskey as much as I do. Alex, I'm, I'm looking for the whiskey dram. Suddenly not seeing whiskey dram comments. Here we are, the whiskey dram. He's saying hi to Toby. He's not telling me who he is. <laughs> and he's a supporter too. Daniel, of course, yeah. And that's when it dawned on me. That's when we were talking. And I asked, and he'd introduced himself as Daniel. And I was like, well, who are you? Who are you? And I said, I asked him who's, what, what his surname was. And he told me his surname. And then the penny dropped. Daniel, thank you. And I hope you forgive me. I hope, thank you for your uh, patience as well. It's so tough. He's a fellow Scot as well. Uh, Silic Bang, thank you so much, Silic Bang, for your recent support as well. It's wonderful to have you on board. What bottle should I be leaving Deanston with this weekend? Anything particularly unique? Yes, there's a bunch of stuff. I don't think we've got any Palo Cortado left. But honestly, do the warehouse tour. If you go to the warehouse tour, do that. It will give you a much uh, better understanding of they've got some Amontillado in there just now. They've got very clean, a uh, nice cask of uh, bur bourbon cask um, going on as well. I think the organic. Um, Listen, you're going to be spoiled at the instant. And any of the distillery specials that they have there, if you're curious about any of them, they will let you try a wee sip first. Uh, most of them are fairly, most of them are under £100. There's a couple of them like this 23-year-old Oloroso that slips above that. Um, but it's, it's uh, take your time. You can eat there. They do wonderful food at the cafe there as well. So you can spend the whole day. Go take two tours. Do a tour in the morning, eat some lunch, and do a tour in the afternoon. I hope you'll leave, leave with something nice, sell it by. Greg Christine, can we please start a Facebook group for the Whiskey Fabric, fully communal? The Whiskey Tribe is good and all, but I believe a shared central location of the Whiskey Fabric would be great. Interesting, Greg. Talk to me offline about this. I've been kicking something around for a long time, but my problem is time and I need support. Sunday Evening Scotch is saying, do you have any plans to come over and do the Kentucky Bourbon Trail? I would love to, Michael. We just got back from several day tours of 12 distilleries in Kentucky. It was so amazing. I would love to. Ooh, a bit of space, dry space. The Deanston has gone a bit. A wee bit of licorice, like a strawberry licorice. I'm going to enjoy this whiskey. I'm going to enjoy getting to know it. And for me to score it, I suppose you'll need to wait till it's finished and it gets dropped in a recycling bin somewhere. <laughs> Mark Slinger is saying, Roy, I wish I had discovered the delights of Speyside sooner. I've been here 20 years. I know I was 35 years old before somebody, an Italian, had to come and introduce me to what Scotch whiskey had to offer. I know how you feel. I feel your pain, Mark. Celebang is saying, cheers, pal. Let me know how you got on once you've been to Deanston. Okay, do we want to find out how this uh, how this wee Kalila is getting on? Let's have a go at this uh, Kalila first. We'll, we'll, we'll have the Scarabus last. I'm fairly confident that on the nose, it's powerful enough to hold up after after the Kalila. The Alchemist is in. Good to have you in, Sebi. Fantastic. Peat smoke here is inside the whiskey. It is completely, it's integrated. It's coming at you at the same uh, rate of knots as all the other aromas. So the other aromas are like a tobacco thing, not cigarette smoke, not ashen but like a moist uh, raw tobacco, like rolling tobacco. The fruit is, is more of an orchard fruit thing, I have to say. 
I'm looking for kind of more fru the fruits that you would associate with the sherry cask, but I'm kind of leaning to more orchard type fruits. It's maybe even a wee bit orangey. Somebody said, Ben said Moscatel. No idea what that's supposed to impart. It's very, very inviting. Okay, the ABV is obvious there. It's 58.4%. Higher ABV is obvious. It's a touch sharper than I imagined it was going to be. Can't place the fruit. It's been... The smoke is absolutely integrated. I think I would have a pretty good shot if somebody put this in front of me. I think I would have a good shot at being able to place that. I'm just guessing. You would probably guess this is a Kalila. I'm going to put a wee bit of water in this one, but I'll go in again neat just to have a, another approach. I think this will give stuff up in time. I think this is feeling, I think it's feeling quite tight. I think it's feeling a wee bit. The spice seems to be more suggestive of AB, ABV rather than the, the casks, the spice. Maybe it's just after the Deanston. The Deanston was, was very relaxed and inviting and easy going and are clean and friendly and approachable, whereas this one is a wee bit more uh, I mean I want to go back, I want to drink more. But I think it's feel it's feeling it just sharper than I expected. Still damn good though. I'm gonna put a wee spot of water in. Just a wee cap full. Where is my... I don't have a dropper. I usually have a dropper handy, but um, I did clear out my office recently and I took all my whiskey paraphernalia away. Just going to put a... Just to let you see what I'm putting in here from this cap, just going to drop in just a couple of wee drops. So we're not, we're not speaking dilution right now. We're just kind of trying to wake things up a wee bit. We're trying to antagonise it a little, just see what it's got to offer. How does it compare to the Kalila 25? The Kalila 25 is very soft. This is not the same. And the Kalila 25 is at 43%. This is at 58. It's, it's really, you're comparing apples and oranges. Jez is saying, can we open up Glasgow Gathering Facebook group and rename it? I will help admin with Rolf. Can get it to, to going tomorrow as Rolf is having a barbecue at my house tomorrow. Awesome. My idea is exactly that. And when you speak to Rolf, you will understand that I've Rolf was very very helpful with that he set up that Facebook group and he ran it for the event that we had in Glasgow a month ago and I was kind of slightly gently forcefully <laughs> encouraging Rolf to kind of maybe switch it up and change the name and, and turn it into something else something bigger um, and I think that he probably uh, understood at that point what it was going to take how much how intense it could potentially become and it could grow arms and legs and things like that. And I'm not sure if he's completely sure. Um, it would be wonderful to have somebody like Rolf doing it. It would be wonderful to have somebody like you involved, Jez. But um, I have ideas and we should probably talk about it and let the, take the discussion a wee bit further. Uh, Whiskey Geek is saying, Moscatel, sweet and syrupy fortified wine. Just as much about texture as flavour I find in whiskey influences. 
okay, this is suddenly with that wee, few wee drops of water and it's suddenly much brighter than, maybe it's just after I've sipped it. Seems to have brought some spark or some spice out of the glass. Let's have a wee try, have another wee sip. Okay, good, 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 good. I think the mistake I've made here is going, is sipping this right on the back of that Deanston. So a very soft and uh, easygoing, clean, uh, accessible Deanston, around about 50% ABV, I think. And then straight into this Isla, the 22 and 58%. This is a nicer sip. This is much more pleasant the second time around. Again, I can tell, you just, I just know that this whiskey's got a lot to give up. It's not beginner's whiskey. I think it needs a wee bit more um, time. Uh, Matthew, uh, Mikey Hayes saying to Matthew, if you put Aquavita at the start of your message, there's a much better chance of Roy asking your questions. Otherwise, they often get lost in the chat. I have to be honest, guys, everybody, um, I, I'm picking up what's highlighted to me. It's just the way it is. Uh, there's 148 of you just now. Um, so the chat, I'm just trying to pick up. Uh, Kenneth Kennedy saying, I've got to go give Roy Aquavita a big thumbs up. So I've picked Kenneth Kennedy's comment there because it says Aquavita. You don't need to say at Aquavita, but as long as Aquavita is there and it's spelled properly, it'll be highlighted to me. Um, Chris Beaton is saying, hi, Roy. Uh, sorry I'm late. Don't worry about it, Chris. Nice to welcome you in whatever time you get here. Christina Zarpoli, it's always great to have you in as well, Christina. I'd love to help Maud when you get your idea together if you need another set of eyes. You're awesome, Christina. Are you, is your hands not already completely full or have you become very skilled at modding after the work you've been doing on the Whiskey Tribe Facebook group? Uh, NZ Anime Manga saying, very excited to try it, Aquavite. I think you'll love it. I think you will genuinely like it. Sip by sip, it's getting better. Fruitier, softer, as my palate adjusts. I'm going to try a wee bit more water in it in a minute and see how we go on with it. Let's see what else I want to talk about before we get into the scarabus. Uh, oh yeah, I need to mention, July 6th, which is what, a week from now, a week tomorrow, is um, Eric Waite is in Glasgow, which is uh, great news. He's in Scotland. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting Eric again. I'm really hoping that the two of us can get together on that Saturday, which is July 6th, while he's in Glasgow. We're talking about maybe taking a trip down to Annandale Distillery, I think, um, but it fully depends. It's normal with me. What I have to do is make sure that closer to the time that I've got some uh, no family commitments that I can take the time away and only then can I can I make the agreement to to do something um, But on the evening Eric would like to have a gathering and get together So there'll be an open invite. I'll be there Eric Waite will be there as well And we're thinking of doing that in the Bon Accord in fact Let's just commit and say Eric if you're still in here tonight as well Let's just commit that we're going to be uh, Saturday night July 6 at the Bon Accord in Glasgow all things being well um, and if anybody wants to come along and uh, shake hands, share a dram, say hello, um, uh, Eric and I would be very, very grateful to meet you there. Um, I'll keep an eye for Eric's comments coming up. But also on the very same day, July 6th as well, which is above a clash, um, is we've got a fantastic event of uh, the Scotch Test Dummies doing their 12 hours of boom which is an annual event that they do. They go 12 hours of live streams, 12 different live streams with different guests on each slot. Um, it's always great fun. Uh, people like to dip in and out, and there are these guys that like to uh, earn themselves the badge of being able to say that they survived the 12 hours of boom by, a, by making a comment in each and every live stream and saying that they watched every single live stream during the 12 hours of boom. So that's also happening on the 6th of July. I'll just give those guys a, a shout out. It's also Eric's birthday, and he's saying I'll be 53 years old on July 6th. Wow, Eric. Oh, 
I'm looking forward to being there. At least for that reason. I'll post an announcement on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. You let us know, Eric. Skippy is saying Aquavita picked up a Bin React 2001 cast strength for my daughter's 18th birthday coming up. I'll be honest, she <laughs> she hates scotch, so I got it for myself. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Listen, um, you, what was you said your name was Scott, I think. I hope um, I hope that you're going to get your daughter something nice as well as you indulge yourself with a 2001 Bin React. Good work, though. Excellent. And what else do we want to talk about? Uh, we want to talk about, I mentioned, I think the Scotch four dummies have a live stream. Uh, obviously, it's it's late for the European folk and the people on our time zone, um, but they are putting together a live stream tonight talking about lost distilleries, which I think is a really cool topic. It's on my list to do, not specifically lost distilleries, but very uh, uh, certain, let's say, lost distilleries I want to talk about. And, uh, but they're talking about Lost Distilleries tonight. Um, I don't know what Lost Distilleries are talking about. I might have the wrong end of the stick. It might be the brand Lost Distilleries. Um, but they also have a, a special guest. They're teasing a special guest as well. I'm going to have one more sip of this Kalida. But I'm going to just drop in the rest of this wee capful. There's about half a teaspoon that's gone in. Not, not so much, but we're getting to the point where it's more than just a drop to waking it up. It's kind of dilution, a little bit of dilution now. Don't know if it's the water, suddenly I'm getting kind of more medicinal notes. M more of the, uh, just, just by thinking about it, you find it right. So suddenly knowing it's clearly, you start to look for a wee bit of brine and salt and things. And sure you can find it. But that's not what's forward. It's not drying. It is quite nice. The finish is really nice. But I still get the impression that that I need more time with it. I can't. It's not obvious. It's not really. If someone else was here with me, somebody with a better palate and a better way to analyze and explore than I, they could probably make this experience much better for me because this is feeling just that wee bit tight. I don't know what it is with it. Alistair Gray is saying, uh, good night from me. Enjoy the summer break with the family. There's one more to go, Alistair. I don't know if you can make it two weeks from now, but this is the penultimate. I've got one more to go. Ah, it's the Lost Distillery brand tonight, Stevie. Thank you very, very much. So they're not talking about Lost Distilleries. I did consider it's quite a curious subject for them. Ben Marnick is saying Lost Distillery will be one, I would think. Uh, didn't know it was on Isla. So Lost It is one of the Lost Distillery brands, I think, that they put out there, um, trying to create perhaps what Lost It might have tasted like. Mark Slinger is saying, Roy, are you a Kalila fanboy now? Well, I've always been a fanboy of Kalila as a thing. Kalila's... Uh, Really, quite it's fantastic that it exists. It really does. I've always been very grateful for Kalila being there, and Kalila Twelve is a favourite of mine. It's a staple. It's a very good, solid, affordable twelve-year-old age statement Isla whiskey. Um, yes, I'm a fan of Kalila. I have to say, I'm a fan of Kalila. And whiskey Jason is saying good night. Aqua Vitae, Mark Slinger saying Roy, that twenty-two-year-old, uh, will put the sample I handed you to shame. Oh, wow. Okay. So Mark recently gave me a sample of uh, an independent bottling of a Kalila. Um, I didn't try it. I did try your Bin Romac, Mark, and I enjoyed it very much. Pete smoked Bin Romac. Okay. We're going to get on with the quiz, I think. I think we'll get put the wheels on and get the quiz. Have I done everything? I've only to do the Scarabus, I think. Um, and I can kind of do that as we do the quiz tonight. I don't have a moderator in tonight. Jason's not been around. I haven't seen him here. It doesn't matter. We can probably manage it ourselves quite quite fine. Tom Good is saying, Tom is in. Good to see you, Tom. Listen to the stream on my drive home. Good times. Good night. 
Uh, Tom, fantastic to have you in. There's an article on the website as well um, that Tom contributed. And I'll just mention that quickly. If anybody wants to contribute to the barfly section of the website, if you've got a flair for writing a little piece and you want to share the story of whiskey, how whiskey caught you, something of interest that you think might be of interest to the other barflies in the community here, it's difficult for you to get all the words down in the chat, right? Um, send it along to me. Um, and of course, you know, if... Uh, if it's well written and you think and if I think it's worthy and I think that other people will enjoy reading it, um, I'd be happy to include it on the Aquaviti website. Okay, let's start this quiz up and uh, have a wee smell of this uh, scarabus. It does, it smells it smells very familiar to me, this whiskey. It's probably going to end up being Kalila, right? But I think it's... It's like... It's more like a, a young Lagavulin to me tonight. Anyway, cheers. Wow. It's actually pretty interesting. It's actually pretty interesting. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think it's crafted to be easy to approach for an Isla whiskey. I think it's quite uh, sweet. It's very sweet, in fact. Um, it's very smoky. Very peaty, it's dry peat, dry smoke, close to ashen, but not quite. It's not like Ardbeg ashen. The finish is short, short to medium, drying. This is uh, 38 pounds. This is not expensive, it's not an age statement. There's no mention of, I would, of course I'll admit that I didn't read the press, uh, press release. Uh, there's probably more information in the email. It doesn't say anything on the bottle and it doesn't say anything on the, on the tube. It's just something I'll point out quickly before I go to the, because I kind of like this. I quite like, that this comes in a recyclable cardboard tube. I don't feel guilty about uh, tossing this in the recycling and throwing it away. But they could do better. It doesn't need to be the tin, the tin top and uh, bottoms. This is still a bit fussy. They could probably have saved a wee bit of money. I don't know what this costs, 50p, whatever it costs. But it probably doesn't need to be in this tube. Maybe it does to sell it. I don't know. Maybe people like to gift it in these tubes. But I want to applaud Kalila and Deanston for this. This is a £150 bottle of whiskey and it's in a recyclable cardboard box. Same box that I bought my Deanston Decenary in and the same box for my Palo Cortado and a bunch of other Deanstons, all in this fairly generic, plain, no guilt to throw away recycle or you can use it for other things, quite sturdy, just a plain and simple cardboard box. That's kind of what I like my whiskey to come in, if it's going to come in a box. Or Kalila. This is the Fischil 22-year-old bottling. It says one of 3,000 bottles on it. This is what the Fischil bottling came in, the Kalila Fischil. Um, just a gift bag, a paper gift bag. Pull the, pull the string, the ribbon handles out of this, and it can just go on the recycling. There's no guilt about what you're doing with an expensive lined wooden box or anything like that. Packaging just gives me heartache. I think there's far too much packaging used. Keep it clean, keep it simple, spend the money on the liquid, spend the money on the whiskey enjoyment rather than the kind of ceremony of the packaging. I know it's a very personal opinion and I know that some people like a very nicely presented, well-packaged thing. 
but wooden boxes with magnets and velvet lining and things like that just makes me anxious. I don't know what to do with it because the box for me to take out and drink from a box all the time is fussy. I don't want to do that. Once the whiskey is open, it stays out of its box forever. Sometimes I'll keep a nice box, but inevitably at some point I end up throwing it away. I've missed a super chat from my friend Mark Tudor. Thank you so much. He's just saying cheers, Roy. And he's sent me across a dram. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Mark. I'll raise a glass to you and say thank you for your dram. Cheers, Mark. Let's go on with this quiz. Are you all ready for the quiz? Are you up for it? Simon Ray saying here, here. He agrees with me. Chris Beaton is saying, I could never get one of those. I bet it's awesome. Aquavite. What one are you talking about, Chris? Uh, big man Pete Head. <laughs> I wonder, wonder what kind of whiskey you enjoy, my friend. Good to have you. Any saying evening. Bit late. We'll catch up later. No worries. I appreciate you turning up whenever you turn up, whether it's now, late, or in the replay. The one glass man is in. Same gift bag for the Lagavulin 19 Fischiel Aquavite. Absolutely. The Lagavulins and last year's Fischiel came in a, a simple bag as well, although it was a cloth bag. Spirit Waters Thomas in Aquavite. Got to dash joys. The little one is calling. It's that. And that's going to be your life for some time, Tom. And uh, it's a privilege. It's wonderful. Uh, NZ Anime Manga saying it's why I love Cadenhead's bottling so much. No faff and pomp, just great malt. Absolutely. Uh, Mikey is saying quiz. I'm going to do well tonight. I can feel it in my dram. Honestly, Mikey, I think it's a wee bit easier tonight, I hope. Neil Cochran is saying it's what's in the bottle that counts. Absolutely, Neil. Absolutely. On that sentiment, let's get the wheels on this quiz and I'll try and keep up. Okay. Put this together in a hurry tonight. I hope it's okay. There are the first mistake. We can see that the 30th of May is still dated, but of course we know that it's the 27th of June. Forgive me for that. And we'll move on to question one and just not pay much attention to that and ask what casks are not permitted for maturation of scotch after changes? This is very recent changes to the SWA regulations. So, of course, I want to know which of these are not permitted. Is it a Calvados casks? Is it B, casks that have previously held stone fruit derived spirits? Or is it C, tequila or mezcal casks? Which casks are not permitted for maturation? Uh, Richard Kirschenbaum has, is in and he's given me a wee dram as well. He's saying, courtesy of YouTube Premium, who knew? <laughs> Richard, let's raise a glass to that and say thank you very much for your dram, my friend. It's a pleasure to have you here. Mm -mm. Oh, wow, this is more over the place than I imagined. It's been in the news a lot recently about this specific thing, about uh, the, the, the Scotch Whiskey Association is um, kind of loosening up its control over what casks can be used, what, what it deems as traditional and what's not traditional. And I think the theme now that they're following is as long as it doesn't interfere with what we come to recognise as the flavour of what Scotch whisky, then it can be used. So we're seeing them chill out a little bit. But they have been... Um, pretty resolute on this one. Triketra is in. Good to have you, my friend. Is saying B. Um, Anime Manga is saying B. Stevie is saying B. Lots of people saying B. Bourbon Rice Scotch is saying C. Is Hoyt is saying C as well. Um, so some people think Tequila Mezcal. Some people think uh, Stone Fruits. Uh, Whiskey Geek is saying, have you ever tried Oak Age Tequila? Not spent any time with it. I'm sure I've sipped it, but not actually tried to enjoy it. I've had a few which are oddly whiskey-like. Wow, be interesting. It would be interesting. Well, let's have a wee look and see what the Scotch whiskey are uh, saying they, we cannot mature whiskey in. And it is, in fact, B for some reason. And uh, they do cite flavour and the impact that, that, that the products have on Scotch whiskey flavour. But stone fruits are not permitted. So there we go. If you answered B, give yourself a point as we move on to question two. Oh, wow. A very generous Richard Kirschenbaum uh, <laughs> to avoid the quiz fee. Richard, uh, for a dram like that, my friend, you are very, very welcome to give yourself an honorary 10 out of 10 on the quiz. Uh, thank you very much. That's very, very generous of you. Um, I, I already said it, but it is indeed a pleasure to have you here. Slancha, my friend, I believe you're in the US. Um, 
So I hope you're doing well and thank you so much for that very generous uh, dram. I'm going to spend a lot more time with these whiskies after the stream tonight. Work out a wee bit more of them. Jimmy Leg and Christina Zerpoli are both helping out with the questions. Let's nip into question two and ask, upon leaving the Port Ellen ferry terminal, if anybody's been watching the video that last night, they'll pick this up, because this appeared in the video last night. Upon leaving the Port Ellen ferry terminal, our beg is to the right, but according to the signpost, what lies 10 miles to the left? Now, I'm not talking about what actually lies 10 miles to the left, I'm talking about according to the signpost. So there might be a few things that, that lie 10 miles to the left, but does the signpost say A, Bomor, B, Bridgend, or C, Port Askig? So on Isla, and I remember this kind of really getting excited about this when I drove off the ferry um, through the Port, El Port Ellen terminal up to that kind of little junction in the road there. And you can go right to Ardbeg or left to this place after 10 miles. And it's that signpost. And it's just that electricity that's going through you at the time when you first arrive on Isla to think, wow, I'm here. And, you know, I just I go left for that place and I go right to Ardbeg. And obviously, if you head for Ardbeg, you're passing Lafroig and Lagavulin on the way as you would have spotted in the video that went out last night. Hope you enjoy that video. But what do you think? What does it say is left? Does it say A, Bamor, B, Bridgend, or C, Port Askig? I thought this was an easy one. And I wonder if it's because you've been to Isla or you just know that that's the case. Perhaps you watched the video last night. It is, of course, Bamor, the signpost clearly says Bamor 10 to the left and Ardbeg to the right. It doesn't tell you how many miles it is to Ardbeg, but I think I would guess it's something like about three miles, I would guess, something of that order. So if you answered A for Bamor, give yourself a point as we move into question three. Which of these is a distillery owned by Dewars, which is in turn Bacardi? So we're looking for one of the five Dewars distilleries. Is it A, Milton Duff, B, Macduff, or C, Scapa? A, Milton Duff, B, Macduff, or C, Scapa? I think I'm being a wee bit more generous well, with the questions tonight. Neil Cochran's saying best sign in the world. It's up there, Neil, isn't it? Whiskey Geek is saying the hard big sign is hard to ignore, though. <laughs> Uh, Bourbon Rice Scotch is saying B for McDuff, Mikey Hayes saying C for Scapa, Thomas Elmer is saying C for Scapa, lots of people saying B, B, B for McDuff. Uh, McDuff seems to be the popular answer. Uh, Christina Zarpoli is saying all yours, Jimmy Leg. Everybody is saying B, Graham Young thinks C. Good to see you, Graham. Good to hang out with you last night. It was really surreal. Graham and I watched the premiere. I was in the premiere for the release of that video last night and both of us were together sitting in the Bon Accord. Earphones in, tapping away at the chat. Um, kind of cool. Whiskey Geek is, is right typing Macduff. Um, and Bob also is saying, what is the size of your Glencairn glass aquavitae? Bob, it's just a standard sized Glencairn. Maybe this camera plays with the perspective a wee bit and makes it look a bit bigger as I pull up the camera. Nope, standard size. Okay, uh, the answer is that indeed B, Macduff, is one of the Dewar's uh, distilleries along with, oh, I'm gonna challenge myself now, Altmore, Craig Elliche, Royal Brackla, and I'll forget the last one, Aberfeldy. Um, but McDuff, of course, is bottled. You, you see it, uh, a lot of it at travel retail as the Deveren, the Deveren with uh, often generous age statements on there for decent value. So if you answered uh, B for McDuff, give yourself a point as we move into question four and ask which of the ferries currently, oh, that should read, I apologize, which of these ferries currently serves routes to Isla? We're looking for a ferry that serves routes to Isla. Is it A, Finlagen, B, Argyle, or C, Isle of Lewis? 
This is another one that you would have spotted if you'd watched the video that I put out last night. Um, that there's a there's a significant sh shot. There's two shots of that ferry where you can clearly see the name written. You can see it written in English and in Gaelic on the side. Um, I want you to tell me: Is it A. Finlagen, B. Argyll, C. Isle of Lewis? <laughs> I told you that the quiz was a wee bit easier tonight. I can barely keep up because the chat's just flying past and everybody is answering A, 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 A. Clearly, it is indeed uh, the famous A Finlagen. Scott and Bart were blown away by the facilities and how plush the Finlagen was. It's a relatively new ferry. When I first went over to Isla, it wasn't as nice as that. Um, that's been put into service on more recent trips. Um, but it's a wonderful place to experience that transition. As I keep saying, I've said it lots of times, from the mainland over to Isla. It's just a lovely trip. And the sailing we had out to Isla and the way back were both very, very super smooth sailings. Um, lovely. Lots of people on 4 out of 4. I did say, I did say, didn't I? I'm going to show you the picture now. This is a picture coming up. I'm going to ask you which still house are we looking at. We're looking at a still house. Now, it's a still house that has three pot stills. So we're speaking about um, an unbalanced distillation, perhaps, a triple distillation, perhaps, or a partial triple distillation. But tell me, are we looking at Glengoyne? Are we looking at Springbank? Or are we looking at Ochentoshin? Are we looking at A, Glengoyne, B, Springbank, or C, Ochentoshin? Which distillery? Is in front of us, and I'm going to leave that up. We'll leave it up uh, and hope that I've not left any clues. And let you have a wee think about it. Hey, hello, whiskey freak. Um, it's nice when we wear our names on our sleeves like that. Nice to welcome you in. He's saying C. Jens Roser Christopher saying is is absolutely adamant. He's saying C. Most people are saying C. Mark thinks it's A for Glengoyne. He probably knows that Glengoyne has three stills. Um, Service Alaf is C. Richard Hall, good to have you, Richard. C. Um, Chris Banks Wildlife, good to have you and Chris. Lee Woodrow, good to see you. Fake Music, all saying C. Good to have you, Lee. And it looks like a new name, Fake Music. Good to welcome you in. Savvy the Alchemist and Greg Boyers both agreeing that it's C. Let's have a wee look. We are looking at C. Ochentoshin. So we have there obviously a wash still, a spirit still, and I think I think the terminology for the other still is an intermediate still. Um, so we have the three stills of Ochentoshin on display there. So that's ju that's just, just past the halfway point. Um, let us know. Eric Wait is saying uh R is Ochen you'll be saying it is Ochentoshin. Scogsmart, five out of five. Prestige Liquids is saying yay, five. Whiskey Franco, good to have you. Whiskey Franco, five out of five. Per Christensen, five. Jules, five. Mikey Hay, four. Multi Haggis Muncher, five. NZ Anime Manga, five. Gregor is saying five. Lots of people. Stefan G, five. Whiskey Franco is trying not to celebrate too early. Lots and lots and lots of people on 100% so far, like Jimmy Legg, saying five out of five. Wonderful stuff. I did. Uh, intimate that tonight's quiz was perhaps going to be a wee bit easier. Um, just the mood we were in, right? Let's move on to the second half. Question six. Distel recently announced their 2019 special releases, which included a £450 bottle of... Now, this is Distel, um, the official kind of worldwide distributed or most markets distributed special releases. Not every market gets it. Uh, certain uh, products go to the States. Some don't make it to the States, that kind of thing. So they're kind of official ones. Not distillery uh, bottlings, but actual special releases, Distel. And amongst it was a £450 bottle, which must be one of the most expensive ever, if not the most expensive. Was it A, a Deanston, B, a Tobermory, or C, a Bunahaven? So I've given you three distilled distilleries there, Deanston, Tobermory, or Bunahaven. One of them was a £450 bottle. I can guarantee I won't be buying it on the subject of tonight's theme that we touched upon earlier. Um, that's way outside of my remit, uh, at least until I win that lottery. I have to be honest that 
this uh, Scarabus, say what you like about it. Um, it's an easy drinker. It is an easy drinker, and there is a bit of character engagement in it as well. I am not completely in love with it, but I have to say I would I would I would score it fairly um, reasonably, and I would recommend it to people that were enjoying smoky whiskies and getting into smoky whiskies. For thirty eight pounds, I think it's um, a decent wee dram for that money. Uh, lots of people think C for Bunahav and lots and lots and lots and lots of people saying C. I think we're looking at six out of six for a lot of people here tonight because, of course, the £450 bottling was, of course, the Distel's Isla Distillery, which is Bunahav and £450. I think it was a Marsala cask uh, from 1988, so quite old, you know, 30 plus years old. Um, and I think it was a decent ABV as well. I think it was presented very well. Still, four hundred and fifty pounds is a lot of money. I have to hope it's rather fantastic for four hundred and fifty quid. But I've not tried it, and it's unlikely that I will try it. Let's move on to question seven and ask which uh, visitor numbers to Scotch. This is all over the news. Fantastic news for uh, visitor numbers in Scotland. Visitor numbers to Scotch distilleries increased again in two thousand and eighteen. Two. What did it reach in 2018? Did it break 2 million? Did it break 2.5 million? Did it break 3 million? A, 2 million, B, 2.5 million, or C, 3 million? What do we think? Let's catch up. George Braley thinks it's A, 2 million. Andrew thinks it broke 3 million, Whiskey Geek is saying A, and Jens Roger Christofferson is saying B. So just in the first three or four answers there, we have everything covered. So I guess this could be potentially a bit of a banana skin for some folk. Arnie Tiger, good to have you in. Arnie's saying B. Nick Keen, good to have you in. Nick, good to see you, is saying A. Uh, Gordon Finney, good to have you back again. Gordon, Triketra, C. Gordon is saying A. Malt Mariners is here saying, since my first uh, fave trio, Balbuero, Pulteney and Anok, is going down the bin, I really hope Distel will not do the same with Tobermory, Buna and Deanston. Do you know what? Balbuero, Pulteney and Anok has not gone down the bin. Um, they have made some uh, missteps recently, but we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Balbuero, 12 year old, still remains remarkable good value, remarkably good value. And uh, I might have a, a topic to cover that in the near future. I don't think I'm going to fit it in this side of the summer break, but I do want to talk about it in the future. Malt Mariners, don't worry about it. Okay, uh, some guessing going on here. Of course, the numbers are quite close together. Let's have a wee look and see. The visitor numbers to Scotch distilleries increased to just over, for the first time ever, it broke. Two million visitors went to Scotch whiskey distilleries. Now we have to bear in mind that Scotland is steeped in history, lots and lots of tourist attractions all over the place. Two million visitors is a huge number, especially when the first ever visitor centre only opened in 1969. It's a relatively new thing to attract that amount of visitors, uh, but it's a very powerful thing, whisky, as we all know very, very well. Question eight. The Dummies recently reviewed Dickel, 13 year old. I always like to throw in a YouTube whiskey question, as you know. They, they recently reviewed a Dickel, 13 year old bottled in Bond. Scott scored it a 92, and Bart scored it what? A, 92, agreeing with Scott. B, 88, a bit less. Or C, 84. Well, I guess a lot less. Found this quite interesting, a very recent uh, review. If you watch the Scottish Test Dummies, you would have picked this up. Quite an interesting kind of discussion that they had backwards and forwards about the scoring and things like that, and individual uh, uh, approach to whiskey and things. Um, but they, in this uh, Dickel 13 year old, which was a $35 bottle of bottled and bond Tennessee whiskey, very interesting. Um, Scott scored 92, but what did Bart score? A, 92, agreeing with Scott, B, 88, or C, 84. Ooh, a wee bit over the place here. Some guesswork going on, I guess. B, B Nick Keen, C, Big Dog, Essain, C, Derek K, C, Chris Banks, Wildlife, C, Jimmy Legs, C, Multi Haggis, Muncher, C, Andy Tiger, C, Greg Boyers, C. I can tell you, and I encourage you to go and watch it, um, just to kind of see this. I think it's cool because Scott scored at 92, 
and enjoyed it, thought it was great value. And Bart said, no, I think this is an 84. Very interesting to see that dynamic. We know that Bart is kind of more drawn towards PT type things. And I think Bart is a wee bit sensitive to oak and heavy oak flavors. And if it leaves any kind of bitterness or tannic influence, uh, any kind of over uh, wood influence, I think it puts him off. Whereas Scott loves cask influence. He loves to be able to taste the cask. He loves to be able to identify the type of cask that's going on. So it's quite a, a, an interesting dynamic there. So when Scott says 92 and Bart says 84, you, you watch this kind of uh, interaction between the two of them backwards and forwards. Really quite interesting and very reassuring for us that they're willing to not just kind of, when they do agree on something and they say that it's good, it makes that all the more powerful because when something does divide them, they're quite happy to share it. I find that reassuring. Okay, let's go on to the second from last and we'll figure out who's still on nine out of nine at that point. Glanar Moor Distillery is to be found in which EU country? I think this is fairly easy, but you have to have heard of it, I guess. Glanar Moor is to be found in which EU country? Is it A, Ireland, B, Austria, or C, France? Where would we find Glanar Moor Distillery? A, Austria, sorry, A, Ireland, A, Ireland, B, Austria, or C, France? Please don't take that slip up as a clue. It is not. Last drop is saying C. Steve A is saying A. Mikey Hay is saying B. Uh, Greg's Whiskey Guide is saying C. Okay, this is us uh, dividing people more than I expected. Greg is confident he's on 9 out of 9. Good for you, Greg. Per Christian is saying C. Thomas Elmer is saying C. Monty Agus Muncher is saying C. The Alchemist C, Fake Music C. Let's have a wee look. Glanon Moor is actually a distillery in France. Now, I have yet to try a, a product from Glanon Moor. It's not widely available. I'm sure I could get it if I tried hard and tracked it down. Um, but I believe the regime and the production methods that they use is very true to traditional. So they're using uh, wooden fermentation, they use worm tubs, slow distillation, all of that kind of thing. Um, they are quite innovative with their products, um, but I haven't tried anything from them yet. I just hear good things about it and I would be curious to try it. But it is, in fact, I wonder if Gregor, I'm sure Gregor got that right, it's a French distillery. So who's on nine out of nine? It's probably why Gregor was celebrating the nine out of nine, right? Who do we have? Multi Haggis Muncher Matthew, you star nine out of nine. Good stuff. Eh, Bogdan Avram, good to have you in. He's saying it's six out of nine. That's already a pass mark. Whiskey Franco, seven out of nine. Uh, oh, it's jumped. It's jumped. Just jumped. Uh, I've lost the flow of the chat now. Stevie, eight out of nine. Jules UK, six out of nine. Uh, 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 Mikey, five out of nine. Not. Not good, go back nine on the golf. Ah, okay. Not a good back nine. Okay, I understand, Mikey. Unlucky. Hey, Scogsmart, nine out of nine. Uh, Eric, wait, saying that's the first question he missed. Nick Keen, seven, eight. I'm looking for the nine out of nines. Oh, wow, Andrea Service, Alafis is on nine out of nine. Good for you. That's a potential 10 out of 10 tonight. So there's a couple of you in a good shape for it already. Whiskey Geek, two lucky guesses. He's admitting, but he's still on 9 out of 9. Scogsbard, 9 out of 9 as well. Neil Cochran, 9 out of 9. My life is almost complete. <laughs> Gregor is saying, never had a 10 out of 10 yet. Could be the day. Gregor, I hope I don't let you down, my friend. What have I got in store for you for question 10? Is it banana skin? Or is it going to see that happening for you and Neil, Andreas, and the other guys as well? Let's have a look at question 10. Which of these Highland distilleries features worm tubs for condensation? Depends how much of a geek you are for worm tubs and such like. Which of these features worm tubs for condensation? So we're looking for the one with worm tubs. Is it A, Oban, B, Tomatin, or C, Old Pulteney? Which of those three has worms, worm tub condensation? A, Oban, B, Tomatin, or C, Old Pulteney? Let me know your thoughts. I'm going back in to approach uh, this Galila. None of the whiskies in front of me have been condensed in a, a worm tub. Nothing on Isla has worm tubs, except for Ardenhoe, which doesn't have any product out yet. 
Deanston uh, does not either. Oh, wow. This Kalila is going to get better and better and better. Okay, I'm looking for the answers here from uh, Andreas. I'm looking for it from... No Googling, boys. No Googling. Gregor is guessing B. Oh, dear. Andreas, C. Okay, let's have a look at which one actually has worm tubs. Oban. Oban from Diageo. Diageo is widely known as the king of the worm tubs. Um, despite chasing efficiencies all over the place throughout the uh, 70s and 80s and beyond, Diageo has remained really, really loyal to the distilleries who they felt their character was fully intact when it was put through worm tub distillation. Uh, most, more than half, I believe, of the malt distilleries or around half of the malt distilleries within Diageo's portfolio still use worm tub condensers. Um, so yeah, the answer was A. Have I thrown a banana skin in with that at the very end for you all? Is there going to be people upset? Scogsmart, 9 out of 10. Oh dear. Carpet's been pulled out from under his feet, 9 out of 10. So close. Mark Slinger, 9 out of 10. Um, Whiskey Franco saying, no, no, no. Oh dear. <laughs> Neil Cochran, 10 out of 10. The best day of my life. Yippee. Well done, Neil. Neil is a friend of mine and a member of the local uh, Glasgow Whiskey Club as well, and an absolute gentleman he is as well. Um, good for you, Neil. Well done, 10 out of 10. Anybody else can match Neil tonight? Anybody else managed to hold on to the end for a 10 out of 10? NZ Anime Manga managed a 9. Mark Slinger, 9. I've seen a lot of 9s. Mikey Hay, 5 out of 10. Wow, you did. You did fall over on the back 9, Mikey, but still it's a pass mark. Don't worry about it. Matthew Multi Haggis Muncher, 9 out of 10. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. 9 out of 10 for Greg, saying too bad. Mark Slinger, 9 out of 10. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Well done. It's good to have a 10 out of 10 as well. And like I said, two weeks time from now, it's going to be the last live stream before I kind of break for summer. And I always kind of promised with the live stream things and keeping it regularly. And I have managed to keep it pretty much regularly over the last year as well. It's been an absolute pleasure and I've enjoyed and looked forward to each and every one. But it's nice to kind of have that break and kind of regenerate, reinvigorate everything, whiskey uh, orientated, spend some time with the family, take a summer holiday, that kind of things. But we'll try and keep in touch. Social media accounts will still be active. I'll be posting on Patreon, I'll be posting on Twitter, Instagram, and I will try my best with Facebook. Facebook is causing me problems right now, especially with the Aquavita page, and I'm very delinquent with a lot of comment replies and things on Facebook. I apologize for that, bear with me, I will get it fixed. Um, and I am intending to finish a couple of uh, video projects that I have so that I can at least uh, release a couple of videos over summer. Best intentions, right? It's very, very time. Uh, uh, you know, the, the video that went out last night was my longest, longest time I've ever put into any video. I had uh, well over 300 knocking on for 400 video clips once the video clips clips from the community were uh, sent in to me as well. We're talking about 125 to 30, 130 gigabytes of footage. It took a long, long time just to catalogue it and to kind of get my head around what I had there in order what I was putting together, how I was going to shape it and things. Um, hopefully the, the second episode might stretch to the third episode, I'm not sure yet will be a bit quicker to put out. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't go away and have a wee look at it as well, it's only 20 minutes and I think it's quite enjoyable. It gives you a bit of insight into Scott and Bart um, and their trip to Scotland. So if you're interested in Scotland and what it's got in store, it might be fun for you to come and watch. I'm going to raise this glass of Deanston, 23-year-old, and I'm going to say thank you to everybody. I'm going to say thank you for your generous drams tonight. Thank you for your participation. It's always wonderful to hang out with you as well. Uh, two weeks from now, on a Thursday night, will be the last live stream before the summer. As I say, I hope you can join me then. I'm not sure what the theme is yet, 
but I'll try and come up with something worthy of the last live stream of the year. I'll raise a hand, sorry, I'll raise a glass <laughs> to all my barflies and say once again, you did not drink alone. It was wonderful to spend another Thursday night with you in the V Pub Lounge. Slanchova, everybody, and thank you for turning up. <laughs>